Welcome to the Jongets Games tutorial for Dungeon Scrawlers Heroes of Undermountain. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as it's being played, and I will be showing three out of the ten dungeons that come in the box. Now, before I get into that, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support this channel and the creation of videos just like this one in the future, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. There you'll find a bunch of ways that you can really help things out, and many of them come with perks like watching some videos early and advertisement free, voting on some videos that are made each month, as well as gaining exclusive access to various content like my impressions on the games that I'm playing recently. Now, the last thing I'd like to ask before we get into this game is if while you are watching this, any part of the game really jumps out to you as interesting, then please comment about that down below because I'd love to see that kind of feedback. All right, let's jump into the game. Out here, we don't have the game set up, but instead I've put at least one version of all of the components that come in the box. Now, before I move on, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles because I might make mistakes as I'm showing you the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them. I will also put any corrections below this video in the top comment. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. At its heart, this is a real-time maze-solving game, and there are 10 different mazes that come in the box, and there are 4 different copies of each of these mazes, so that the game can be played with up to 4 different players. The rules suggest that for each play of this game, 3 maps are chosen, and you play them one at a time, and then count up the points between each, and then whoever has the most points across those wins, but you can play any number of maps in a sitting, from just playing one maze, up to as many mazes as you like for that play session. Now, I did say that this is a real-time game, and what that means is every time you are playing a map, you are either racing against your opponents because as soon as someone reaches the end, everyone has to stop, or several of these actually have a timer where you are instead racing against the clock. In either circumstance, once we are done with the maze, we will pass it to the right, and then we will all score our opponent's performance. Now, the way we actually travel through these maps is using dry erase markers, and we draw a single line through these different maps, trying to interact with as many of these different things as possible, because different icons give you victory points in different ways. Now, you should try to stay between the lines, because you can suffer penalties if you don't, and again, your opponents will score that for you. Now, I haven't described how any of these icons work just yet, and don't worry, I'll cover all of them over the course of this tutorial. Now, there's two more things I'd like to briefly cover in this overview, and the first is that each time you play the game, every player will gain one of these character cards, and each of these will alter the rules for that specific player as they are working their way through the mazes. And the other thing I'd like to point out is that in some of these mazes, some of these cardboard tokens will be in play. Now, the way these work is as soon as somebody meets a condition, they grab the cardboard token from the middle of the table, which means if you do that before your opponents, then you've denied that component away from them. These could just be victory points from these orbs or these keys that can be used to go through a variety of specific doors that you might find in the maze. Now again, I'll describe the details of how all this works while we are playing, and I think on that note, let's start the game. Now this is technically a 2-4 to four player game, but for today's tutorial, I am going to be just playing one map at a time, trying to go quickly to simulate the stress of playing against another player. Today we are going to go through three of these maps. We'll start with the simplest one, which is map 1, then we will jump up to map 4, and finally we are going to do map 10, which is the most complicated one. Now I will describe the details of the rules for the mechanics that show up in each of these, and if you don't want to be spoiled as I actually work through the maze, then you can skip ahead to the next one to learn how the following one works. That being said, I'm only showing three of these mazes, so there are seven others we won't be highlighting, and every time you play the game, you use different characters, and they will have you trying to do different things in the same maze, so you might do the same maze multiple times and take different paths based off of the benefits that your specific characters will give you. So, let's start things off by learning the basics, and then playing through map number one. The first thing to point out is that on each map there is at least one starting location, and for this map there is just one. Now as a general rule for all of these maps, you can only ever have one line, and you have to continue from wherever you left off. What that means is if you start going and then raise your pen off the board, you then have to go back to the same exact spot and continue to draw. Now there is no penalty for crossing over your line, so you could decide to go back like this if you change your mind, but there can be penalties for crossing over walls. Let's zoom in a little bit more, and for an example, say we went through here, and we drew our path just like this. Obviously, this isn't great, because it's a maze game, and you're supposed to stay within the walls. Now, the first thing to point out is that whenever you cross through a wall, but stay within the same corridor or room, you simply lose one victory point. So this right here would be minus one point, because we crossed over a wall, but we stayed within the same corridor. The corridor, in this case, is marked by this brown area right here, and then the rooms are also marked out with the different colored areas around them. 
So we'd lose one point here. And if you touch a wall but don't go through it, there is no penalty, so that's fine. But then over here, you'll notice we went through this wall and into another room. When that happens, you actually end your overall run right here. And it doesn't matter how many other things you did as you continued on, you don't score any of the rest of your run once you cross through a wall into another room. Obviously, that was a blatant example crossing through right here, but instead, if we did something like that, this would still count as not scoring the rest of our run because we crossed over a wall from one room into another room or into a corridor. So you have to be really careful not to cross through walls into different rooms or corridors because you don't score the rest of your line. Well, those are the basics for actually drawing our path, and now let's talk about some of these icons. As you can see, there are a variety of them out here, even on this first map, and whenever you enter a room, you were going to lose one point for every icon in that room that you do not interact with. As long as you even touch an icon, that counts as interacting. So if we moved on like this, we would lose one point for not interacting with this one, but we would not lose a point for this one because we at least touched it. Now, the way we actually win this game is by having the most points, so let's talk about how we can gain points instead of just lose them. If we look down here at the bottom of map number one, it tells us we are going to get one point for correctly interacting with these four different icons that can be found within this maze. The first one to talk about is going to be treasure. Now, treasure are icons that have a yellow border around them, and in order to score a point for them, you have to draw your line completely around that treasure. By doing that, you then score a victory point. And the next thing to talk about are spells. There are a couple different types of spells in the game, and in order to score those, you just have to draw the pattern and then continue on. Obviously, this one goes up and down a bunch, and that one squiggles around, and this one over here is sort of like a spiral. So we correctly traced out that spell, which means that would get us one point. The next thing to talk about is defeating monsters. The way we do this is we have to completely cover them with the pen. So if we moved on into this room and fought these monsters, we would only score a point for them if we completely covered them with our line. Of course, after that, we can continue on, and then each of these would get us one victory point. The last type of icon to talk about right now are exotic plants. Let's say we moved our way through into this corridor, and in order to score for these plants, you just have to touch them, essentially swiping them on your way. So if we went through like this and like that, then we would gain one point for each of these exotic plants because we at least touched them with our line. The next type of icons we can find on the first map is artifact fragments. Now the way these work is when you enter a room with them, you have to go through these in numerical order. So we can start with one, then go to two, then three, four, five, and then six, and then continue on. Now for each set of three stones that you go through in order, you get one victory point, but it is worth noting that if you only interact with half of these, say for example we went one, two, three, and then continued on, well these three will count as an icon that we did not interact with, so this would be plus one point, and then minus one point for not interacting with that, so we would have just generated zero points from this room. The final thing we'll find in this first map is a boss. As you can see, that shows up down here, and just like when defeating these monsters, you have to fully fill the boss in with your line, and then on this map, that will get you four victory points. As you can see on this first map, there is one boss up there, but on many of the maps, there are multiple. Now, in general, if it doesn't say otherwise, the maze is going to end as soon as one player has defeated the boss. So if we made it all the way over there and completely filled this in, we would then say done, and everyone would have to put their pens down. Now, each player will not score negative points for the room they ended in if they did not interact with everything. So if we were all the way over into here and then somebody said done, we'd stop, but we would not lose the victory points for these artifact fragments in that room because that is where we ended. Obviously, we are going to try to do as much as possible before one player finishes. So somebody could blitz to the end to try and get some quick points and stop other people, or maybe everyone will try to go slowly, getting as many victory points as they can. And again, for all maps, you stop as soon as somebody Somebody beats the boss unless it is otherwise stated down at the bottom. Now, I did mention in the overview that each time you play the game, you're going to take one of these characters, and that will affect how you actually go through this maze, and we'll talk about these after we finish this first maze. I think now let's actually go through this as an example, and then score it to see how this works. Again, if you don't want to see this happen, then just skip ahead to the next timestamp so that you can learn how each of those characters affects the game when you're playing with them. All right, let's now try to make our way through this maze, and I'll describe what we're doing as we're going for it. And remember, normally you'd be playing against somebody else, racing towards the end. And for this, I'll just try to go fast to simulate the stress of other people playing. So we will start, and I think we'll just go up here and cast this spell. Then we can take this treasure, 
And I don't know, I like the idea of getting these exotic plants. And we're kind of making our way up there, although I'm not sure how to get there. Once we arrive in here, let's defeat this goblin, circle this treasure, and maybe at this point, it looks like somebody else is going really quickly, so maybe we should go a little bit faster. We can take these treasures and then continue on. It's really hard not to do everything in these rooms, but of course other people are going quickly, and I don't know, maybe we don't have time for those spells. Oh, we try to do this. Oh, we should probably do this artifact. Three, four, uh, five, six. We can defeat this goblin. Try to complete this, and other people are going really quickly. Uh, actually, hold on. We could go through here, and there that comes to the final boss, and then we could try to defeat this boss as quickly as we can. And there. Okay, we finished. Now, once again, after anyone defeats the boss, everyone's going to have to stop, and then we can pass these to the right and score. Let's go ahead and score our own, and looking over here, we can start, and I think we correctly match that symbol, so that's going to give us one point, and then we fully trace this, so that is a point as well. Moving on through here, we touched this wall, but we didn't go through it, so that's not a negative. That'll be another point there, and that's going to give us a point. We touched the wall again, but did not go through it. In here, we defeated this monster, so that's a point. I think we fully traced this, so that's a point. But I don't think this is going to be worth a point to us. As you can see, we sort of traced it out, but we went really wide not touching this. It almost looks like a circle instead of a line. So we're not going to lose a point because we touched it, but I don't think we get a point for that one. Moving on, we'll get a point for this and for that exotic fruit. And then over here, I don't think we quite closed the loop. There's a little bit that we didn't fully get to, so again, that's going to be zero points, which isn't a penalty, but it's also not a point. This one we did touch, so that means we'll get a point for this. And then moving on to the spells, I think both of these will score. As you can see, we matched the full shape of all of these. Moving on up here, we went through that exotic plant, so that gives us a point. But then over here, we did not quite defeat this goblin. When we focus in, you can see there's a bit of an ear and sword still poking out there, so I went a little too fast, so that's not going to count as a point. Now, also, we see up here, I did not trace that one well at all. I was starting to uh, go a little bit fast, so that is not going to get us a point. And, unfortunately, we did not interact with this at all either. Fortunately, up here, we just barely touched that spell, so I think that's going to count as interacting to not lose us a point. So that means we are, unfortunately, going to be just losing negative one point for this room, because that is minus one, zero, zero, and zero. Now, I do want to point out that you only lose points for elements that you did not interact with within a room. You do not lose points for elements you did not interact with within corridors. This exotic plant is within the same corridor area, but we don't have to touch all of these to not take a penalty. Moving on to this room with the artifact, it looks like we did this correctly, so that is two points. And then over here, we once again rushed trying to defeat that goblin. There's an ear showing there, so that's not going to count. This treasure is going to count, though, so that's going to be one point for that room. Moving on through here, we unfortunately entered this room and then left it without actually interacting with all of these artifacts. I got a little bit too hasty, so that means, unfortunately, that's minus two points for the sets of three artifacts we did not get to. Then into this corridor, we get plus one, plus one, and then finally, we have the boss that we were able to successfully completely cover, and that is going to get us four victory points. Once we add and subtract all of these points up, our score is going to be 18, and now that we are done scoring, we can all move on to the next maze. In this case, that is going to be maze number four that has a new mechanic of keys and locks. Now, before we actually talk about that, let's discuss these characters. Again, at the start of the game, each player is going to take one of these, and they will use that same character for all of the mazes that they play through for that game. So let's focus in and start by talking about the wizard. This says instead of tracing a spell to cast it, you may simply draw a small circle inside, so that means you can be very quick to cast these spells as you move on through the dungeon. After that, there is the ranger, and that says that exotic plants you collect are worth two points instead of one, so the ranger really tries to prioritize hanging out in those corridors, getting as many of these exotic plants as they can. The cleric is next, and it says when collecting artifact fragments, you can connect the stones in any order instead of having to go in numerical order from lowest to highest. After that, there's the Barbarian, and it says when you defeat monsters, you just have to cover up their head. You don't have to fully cover up everything else, but it's worth noting this does not count when you're trying to defeat bosses. Finally, there is the Rogue, and it says you just need to touch treasure in order to collect it. You don't need to fully encircle it. All right, let's now come back to map number four to talk about a new mechanic which involves keys and locks. As you can see, the game comes with three keys in four different colors, and when you look at the bottom of these maps, they tell you which specific mechanics you are using, but it's worth noting that all of the mechanics shown in the first maze exist for all of the mazes in the game. So, we'll score the treasures, artifacts, spells, and monsters in the same way as before. 
Now down below, it says that this map has keys, and the way this works is as soon as you draw through a key of a specific color and shape, you take that cardboard token from the middle of the table, and you put it in front of you. Now there is a limited number of these. In a two- and three-player game, there's only going to be two of these available, and in a four-player game, there will be three of each. Now what that means is if, while you're going, both of the blues are taken, and then you end up finding the blue key here and going through it, you don't actually get a blue key because you went too slowly. So there's a bit of a race element to try to get these keys, and the reason you want these keys is because each of them will allow you to get through doors of the matching color. If we focus in a bit, you can see, for example, if we went through this red key, we would grab this token from the middle of the table if there was one available, and then we could use that to go through all of the red doors that are out here in the dungeon. For example, this one over here. Now, some locks actually have multiple keys, so if we wanted to go through this right over here, that would take a red and a yellow. So just having the red would not be enough. We'd also need to find the yellow key in order to enter through there and then fill this boss in to defeat it. Let's focus back out, and as you can see, the boss scoring is going to differ from one maze to the next. In this one, defeating the boss is only going to get you three points, whereas it was four points for that first maze that we played. The last thing I'd like to point out about this map is the fact that it has four different starting locations that you can choose from when we all begin going through the maze. Now, just like before, I am going to work my way through this maze as an example, but if you don't want to watch that happen, then instead go to the timestamp in the top right corner so that you can learn about even more things that show up in these different mazes. Now, I think for this example, let's use one of these characters, and in particular, let's go with the rogue. That means we don't have to fully encircle the treasure in order to score a point for them, we just have to touch them with the line. All right, let's now give this map a go, and we'll all start at the same time, and I think we'll start up here in the top right. So, here we go. Let's start by going down here. We can defeat this monster. We've entered this room, so I think we should go one, two, three, four, five, six. Then we can go through here. Touch that treasure, which will get it for the rogue. We'll take this green key. At this point, a blue is gone. Then I think we should try to defeat this monster. Then we can move on and get that exotic plant and this one. Uh, in this room, we should defeat the monster, cast the spell. Um, I suppose we could go over here to get this treasure and then back again. But of course, we just lost some time doing that. We have to be careful at this point. Another key is gone. Okay, so we need this Let's go through here, let's defeat these. We have a green key, but we don't have a blue or a red, so that means we have to continue on. I think we need to start being quicker. Let's just touch that and continue. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, we have this key. Oh, I know, we'll go through here. Let's defeat this monster, even though it took us some time. Then up here, we'll touch this and then take the yellow key. At this point, another key is gone. We can cast this spell, and then green, yellow. We could get to the final boss over here if we can trace this back well enough. Hmm, I don't know. I think at this point, let's just continue on. We can go through here. I think we need to go quicker. Let's just cross through those, get this, come through here, touch these in any order, go through the green, go through here, and then how do we actually get over to there? We have to pattern this out. Oh, we need to go up. Let's go up here, not worry about that. Go through this, not worry about that. We need to just start to go really quickly at this point. I think, let's just not worry. Let's go through these. We can go through both of these locks and, oh, it looks like somebody just finished before us. We took a little bit too much time. Okay, so at this point, everybody has to immediately stop. We were able to get through this double lock right over here. We figured out a way to get in there. Uh, we sacrificed a lot of points just kind of touching a bunch of things. But either way, now that we're all done, we can pass this to the right and then score each player's board. And obviously, we are just going to score this one. And we will remember that we do get to score the treasures because we are the rogue. and We just had to touch them. We did not have to fully encircle them. We can begin the scoring up here. We're going to get one point for that. And then over here, we got it wrong at first, but then we correctly did this, so that is going to be two more points. Moving on, we get a point for this and for that, so that's two points for that room. Then we get two points for the corridor, another two points for this room. We went over there to touch that with the rogue ability to get another point. Uh, we doubled back through here. It looks like we touched that, but we didn't go through it to lose a point. We'll get one for that. Two points for these. At this point, we were still being thorough, and then we decided to get faster. We went through that, so we don't lose a point, but we also don't gain a point. And here we did successfully hit all of these in order, so that is going to be two more points to us. Then we get a point for this and for that, so that's two more. Coming through here, we get a point for this and for that, so that is two points in that room. We got the yellow key, but the keys don't actually get us points. They just get us through doors. Moving on, we started to just get really hasty. We don't lose points for these, but we also don't gain points. 
Then over here, we get a point for this because of our rogue ability. And here, we touched all of them so we didn't lose a penalty and then went through this door. That is going to get us a point. This one will not. Uh, this one will get us a point because of the rogue ability. We did not defeat either of these, but we touched them so we don't lose points. Same goes for these two spells over here. And then over here, we started fighting this monster, but did not... Oh no, we went right through this room, and there are nine fragments in here. So that is three sets of three. So that means being so hasty actually cost us three victory points. Negative right there, because we did enter the room. Moving on, we will gain a point for that exotic plant. We will get a point for each of these. And then we made it through these double doors and got to where the boss was, but we did not fully fill it in before somebody else was able to fill it in, so that means we had to stop. Remember, if we had entered this room but hadn't actually touched the boss at all, we would still not lose a point for that because you don't lose any negatives for the final room that you end in. When we add and subtract all of these points, it looks like we got 22 from this map. Now, again, we got 18 points from the first map that we had, so that means at this moment we have 40 points throughout the game, and we are going to play one more dungeon. Remember, the rules suggest you play through three of these, but you can play through as many as you want. All right, here is the third maze we'll be looking at today, and this is going to incorporate the rest of the mechanics that I would like to teach. Now, I will be playing through this afterwards, but again, you can learn how all of this works and then skip me actually working your way through the maze if you'd like to keep it as a complete surprise. Now, once again, this is map number 10, which is the most complicated out of all of the maps, and it integrates everything that we've talked about before, as well as several new mechanics. The first of these is orbs. As you can see over here, we have these pink orbs and these blue orbs, and in order to score an orb, you have to fully fill in the top of it. For example, this orb right over here, if we enter this and fill in the top, then we can immediately take the topmost matching orb token, that's a blue orb, so we take this one, and it says first, which means in this example we are the first player to fill in a blue orb, and this is worth five points. The second player to fill in a blue orb will get four points, then three, and then two. So the orbs in both colors are essentially a race. The sooner you get to them, the more victory points you get for grabbing these tokens from the middle of the table. The next thing to talk about is this hourglass symbol. Now, this means that for this maze, we actually have a timer, and we'll need to use some form of stopwatch or clock to count this out. As you can see over here, it says the scroll is going to end when we hit two minutes or when somebody hits the exit. Now, again, normally the scrolls end when anyone completes one boss, but as you can see, there are many bosses in this one, so completing a boss is just going to get you three points. It will not end the scroll. If we hit two minutes, then immediately everyone is going to have to stop, or if any player reaches this exit spot, they are going to get five victory points, and then everyone has to stop even if we haven't reached two minutes. It's worth noting that for some of these mazes, it ends only when we hit the end of the timer, not having an alternate condition like this, and they aren't always two minutes, sometimes they are less. The next thing to talk about are portals. As you can see, there are entries and exits, and there are letters that match up. What that means is if while you are drawing your line, you reach one of these entry points, for example, this C entry right here, you lift up your pen and find a C exit that's out here in the map, and there might be multiple. And then you're going to put your pen down onto one of those exits and keep going, and you might hit another portal and then move on to another exit and then continue going throughout the maze. The next thing to talk about are prisoners. They work just like the exotic plants, so by simply touching them on your way, you will get one victory point for rescuing them. After that, it's now time to talk about skeleton keys. If you ever touch one of these skeleton key spots, you can take any of the keys that are currently still available, so you can grab any one of your choice, and you may notice that some of the doors have the skeleton key lock on them, and that means you can go through this with any key of a color. But, for example, this one right here shows three of them, so you're going to have to have three keys to make your way through here. And it is worth noting you can never have more than one of any key color, so you're going to need three different key colors to make it through there and reach this exit. There are locations that have restrictions as well as skeleton keys. In order to go through here, you need a red key and then a key of a different type in order to successfully make it through. Well, at this point, I've taught you all of the rules to the game, but before we finish this tutorial, I am going to have a go working our way through this maze. If you don't want to see that happen to save all of the surprises that you might find, then that's totally fine, and I hope that you've enjoyed learning how to play Dungeon Scrawlers. Now, if you'd like to stick around, then let's see how this goes, and let's use a different character. Remember, normally you keep the same character for all of the mazes that you play with in one session, but for this video, I'd like to show some variety, so let's pretend that we had the ranger all the way through, and this one will get us two points for every exotic plant we draw through instead of the normal one.
So let's give this a go. And remember, this is going to take a maximum of two minutes. But if any player is able to get through this triple skeleton door and into the exit, they get five points. And that stops everyone, no matter what the timer is at. So let's set the timer to two minutes and begin. So starting right over here, the only thing we can do is go into A. That's a portal, so we have to go into an exit. And there are a bunch of them. I think we will go into this one. We'll uh, come out of there. We'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. We can continue on. We have found uh, one exotic plant. We don't have any keys at this point, which is a bummer. Uh, we can go through here, get another exotic plant. I think let's trace this treasure out to get the points. Let's trace this out to get the points, and then we've reached a boss. Let's fight this boss because the bosses are worth three points in this round. Then we can touch the skeleton key, and when we do, we can take one of these. At this point, a couple of them are gone. Maybe we take this red one, and then we can go into this blue portal. So we can come out over here, and this is great. There's a couple of exotic plants that we can take because those are worth more points to us. I think let's just go quickly through all of these things. Uh, at this point, we have a red. Oh, no, we should have taken a yellow or a green. Let's go all the way up here. Let's fight this boss real quick. We've used almost half of our time, and that's pretty scary. We can touch this and then take the green. Maybe this one's gone. Then we can come back through here, go through the green, touch both of these prisoners, and come back out again. Now, at this point, oh, we should go back up here and through to C. That means we can pop back out somewhere, and let's emerge onto a C spot. Well, we've got two keys, so let's emerge over here. We've got red and something, so we can go through here and rescue that prisoner. Then we don't have a yellow, but we do have a green and something, so we can go through here and rescue that prisoner. And then I think we have to go back through A. No, no, <laughs> this is probably a mistake. Uh, coming back through A, let's appear up here. We can go through there. Let's just touch all of these. We really don't have that much time. Let's go through these. We'll go back into B and then come out maybe a different one. Over here works. We can go through those, get another exotic plant. And, oh, we have a red. We should go rescue that prisoner. And then we can rescue that prisoner, get this exotic plant. And we are really running out of time. Uh, I think we will just go through here, touch this, take a key, take this blue, hit this C, come out of here, go through there and reach the exit. <laughs> we did that, I think, three seconds before this actually stopped. So technically, when we hit that exit, we would say everybody has to stop, even though there was about three seconds left on the clock. And now we can pass these over and score them up. It looks like we went through this whole thing and we didn't take any of these orbs, which can be worth a decent number of victory points. They were locked behind some skeleton doors that I don't think I had a key to get to in that moment. And I never backtracked, although we did rescue quite a few of these prisoners. So let's go ahead and score this. And I think we can just score this area before moving on to some of the others. We don't have to actually trace the path entirely through. We just have to check the line. Um, now over here, it looks like we are going to get five points for uh, hitting the exit. Then there are two prisoners. So that is two more points. After that, we can score up here. It looks like we get nothing for these because we touched them, but we did not fill them in. Uh, that's the case for all of these, except over here, that's two plus two. So that's four because, again, we are the ranger. In here, we defeated the boss, so that is three points. Then over there, we finished the spell and took that treasure, so that's two more points. Then we got two more exotic plants, which normally are one point each, but since we're the ranger, that's two points each, so that is four. Down here, this is a completed artifact set. We did those in the right order, so that is two more points. Then we have this set over here. That is a defeated boss, so that will be three points. Then we were able to rescue two prisoners right there. And then up here, it looks like we have two exotic plants for two points each. Again, that's plus one point for each of them because we are the ranger. Finally, we can score this bit over here. It looks like we get nothing for those, but there is an exotic plant as well as that one. So that's two of them for two. So that is four points. We saved a prisoner there and a prisoner there. So that is two prisoners. Going down here, we get nothing for these, but we don't suffer a penalty. We also get nothing for that boss because we went through them. We did not actually defeat them. When we add all these points up, that is a final score of 37 for us. And then we would add to that the points that we got earlier. In this case, that was 40 from these two. So that is an overall score of 77. And if we have the most points, then we'll be the winner. If there is a tie for the winner, then the player who has the highest single map score is going to win. And if 37 was the highest amongst those tied, then we could use that to break the tie and win the game. Well, at this point, the tutorial is coming to a close. I have taught all of the rules to the game, and we've seen three examples that showcase all of the different mechanics that show up in the game, and we've seen a couple of these characters as well. I do hope that you've enjoyed learning how to play Dungeon Scrawlers.
As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.